connect, serve and grow is what you can expect at the House of Reconciliation. Leadership, community, education, wellness and participation is part of our plan for your spiritual growth and success. Family and faith is a core value for the House of Reconciliation, working to help people find their purpose. Want to make an impact in the kingdom? Ready to tap into your future? Meet us at the House Sundays with Pastor Reginald Campbell, www.houseofreconciliation.org. The kingdom for soul winning. This word, bread of life, that I receive today, not only for me, but to be shared with others, that they may grow in Christ as well as myself for the purpose of successful living. Thank you. You may be seated. want to take this opportunity to welcome all that are joining us. We are here at the Mother Campus, uh, 210 Pansy Road, Hodges, South Carolina. Thank those. We were at the early service, early bird service in Greenville, 1427 Suite E, Launch Road. And, of course, to the virtual campus and to all those that are connected to us globally. We thank you for joining us uh, this morning. Don't want to waste your time. A uh, couple housekeeping things we need to do is that we will be roller skating on the 15th. And I cannot remember. It is in Piedmont. What's the name of it? Roller time in Piedmont. I think it's $10 per person. Want to invite as many as can. Please uh, go online and you can hit us up. And if you all will put up the um, ways that they can pay and put that uh, on there, what is for uh, bowling. And it's at 6 p.m. 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. next Saturday, the 15th. And we're going to go bowling with the kids. Rollers, oh man, I'm still stuck on bowling. Man, I'm a, yeah, or something wrong with me, one. I don't know if it's bowling or something wrong. Uh, I think somebody would say something wrong, but we're going roller skating. We're going roller skating, so we're going to do it, and, and please come and join us. It is, it'll be open, but it is $10 to come and to bowl. So thank you so much uh, for that. And don't forget, uh, Father's Day is, I believe, next Sunday. So if you want, and if you're online, and I think last time they posted them online, if you want pictures of your father, uh, please send them in, and we will do our best to get them in the rotation to show um, the source of life that allowed you to be here, that aided in your success in being here. We're going to talk today about won't let me B. And this month, the topic is bruise, but not broken. And I said this previously in the month of May, the adversary punches you in the face and waits for you to blame God. I'll say it again, the adversary. Not people. People are objects that are used by the adversary in your face, in the face, and waits for you to blame God. One thing out of that, the question would become, when do you start taking responsibility for your own actions and the things that you allow to be around you? So Galatians says it this way, stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has set you free. Be not entangled. And so this is where we're picking uh, the subject matter, entangled again with the yoke of bondage. There are some people and some behaviors that are not good for our lives. There are certain foods that we could eat when we were younger that are not good and healthy for us as we mature in life. There are some associations and some conversations that we literally does not add an advantage to us. You can't watch mess and expect to be efficient and in a different place in your life. You can't hang around people who put you down and then expect to be motivated to do something. 
So when we look at this, he is actually speaking to uh, the Galatian saints, and you had the Jews and the Gentiles, and they had a problem with the Gentiles' personal hygiene and personal private parts of their body. I want you to say this to me. Other people business is not our business. So stay out of our business. Sometimes we focus on people and we're not focused on us. So when we look at the top, it says, won't let me be. Here's what happens to most people. Don't wreck your future running away from your past. Your past becomes your stepping stones of experience and knowledge and what not to do again. Some people you hang out with, you don't have the same value. Some jobs you work, they're not going to pay enough for you to provide for your family. So sometimes you try to shut out something that really is a step for you to learn from. Don't take failure as failure. You never fail if you learn. If you work the process, you won't have the same result you did the last time. See, here's what happens to most people. Sometimes it's hard to find a place to start. Sometimes it's hard. Well, I don't know what I want to do. I want to go here. Well, I don't know if I want to do this. I don't know if I want to do that. And you waiting on the Lord to tell you what he's already given you. The problem is you've taken no time to discover you. Nobody knows more about you than you. People's opinion weigh too heavily on you. And when they weigh heavily on you, they also hamper your future. So first Peter, so here's the thing. Out of our mindsets, this is, and this is actually I'm saying this to parents now, comes our behavior. Our children watch our behavior. It's two things kids pick up easy. How to be abused and how to abuse. How to be negative and how to give negativity. You, your children, your grandchildren, and your heirs will never prosper because many families have never really had a positive conversation about the present and the future. You might have to let that sink in. We talk about yesteryears. We talk about yesterday. We talk about what Big Mama did and how she fried pies and how Big Papa used to put the uh, food in the ground when we didn't have a refrigerator. We always talking about what we no longer live in. He broke my heart. He lives in Kansas now and he still got your heart. I've gotten fired. You got fired 10 years ago, and that's what you're still talking about. Hmm? Hmm? So 1 Peter says it this way, 1 Peter 5 and 8, be sober. To be sober, you have to get around solid people and, sub and things that have substance to them. So if you're a writer this morning, I need you to hunt and look for substance not he say she say they say substance substance are connected to facts and truths he says be sober and be vigilant always seek out something higher and greater than the knowledge you have the reason he says this because your adversary so say this with me I have an adversary now, let me quote this to you. The Bible says, for well, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and darkness and wickedness in high places. Why is high places significant? Your adversary knows where you have the potential to be. 
your potential and your destiny knows the substance that you're going to need to have in order to get there. The problem is you don't know it. You quit before you're developed. You quit before you're cured in wisdom and experience. Someone has knocked down your confidence. Someone else is controlling your opportunity. He says, your adversary, you don't think anybody is against you. When you don't think anybody is against you, you are against yourself. Here's the problem. You take it personal when it's spiritual. You mad at the seven people on your job. You don't see the two imps on your job. You just see the results of what the imp has planted. You have a spiritual adversary. There is an adversary that is jealous and hateful of your opportunity to be more than what you see. So what that adversary does is hinder and play games in your mind. If the adversary can create one leak in your faith, they can poison your substance. You don't pray to strengthen my faith, God, because when you pray to strengthen my faith, you have to take a test. You will never know how far you can run until you start running. And if you're not in condition, you're not going to get very far. Talked to a gentleman on yesterday. He said about five miles is when he would usually get winded riding his bike and not having using the electrical part of the bike. Well, because he's had some things and been traveling and on vacation, when he went to ride his bike, he had to turn on the electrical part before he even achieved one mile. These imps that are battling you, are setting you up to fight your adversary. They are the precondition. They're going to test you and you quit before you ever sit down and take the test. I'll give it to you this way. Anybody here ever had a pop quiz? You get to class and there's a test and you wasn't expecting it and you thought the day before the teacher was just running her mouth and you just tuned her out and started listening to your iPod and all that stuff. Back, that was back in the day when you had iPods, you know. Listen to your big CD player on your arm, you know, on your side, you know. You know, you, we used to have, what do they call them, walkers? What do they call them? Walkmans. We used to have Walkmans had big CDs in them, you know. And then you come into a situation and the day you got a pop test. And what he's saying is, as you proceed in life, you're going to have to pass the pop test. Many people have quit when they heard that was a test. It says the devil walking about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Satan is there to hinder you. And so let's, let's have a conversation. I'm going to skip down to a couple. Of, let's have a conversation. Why would the devil be bothering you? Go ahead and say, I don't bother nobody. I just try to live my life. That's right. Your adversary see what you don't see. And the adversary job is to disturb you so you don't see it. You only see what's in front of you. You never see what's ahead of you. I'll say it again. You only see what's in front of you. You never see what's ahead of you. So when you, when you get past what's in front of you, you have no protection for what's ahead of you. Is this making sense? So then now you are exposed to your adversary. Here is what you should have. Sustainable principles. 
We talked about that this morning. Sustainable principles, not emotional moments. Sustainable principles, number one, is consistency. Is your prayer life consistent? Now, prayer life isn't asking. A prayer life is fellowship and communion with God. Do you commune with God? Or, or, or is God your order taker? To some people, God is a drive through So we drive through, throw in our request, go to the service window, and expect the blessing. Are you consistent in your personal devotion with God? If you are, when do you listen? I said to the brethren and some of the deacons this morning when we were having a conversation, and, and one of the brothers asked about prayer, and I said, prayer isn't to change God. Prayer is to prepare you. Now, hold on. What is it to prepare you for? His will versus yours. And if you're praying that prayer, that means God has to stretch you beyond where you are. If you're just praying, give it to me, Lord, give it to me, Lord, and I hate to say this, won't he do it? <laughs> you know, they, they sing that song, won't he do it? Look at God, won't he do it, won't he do it, won't he do it? Okay. All right. All right. I'm more into the seed than the miracle because everybody has gotten a miracle at some point in their time. And some people are still holding the miracle bad with no seed. I'm one of the ones that teach you to plant a seed. And your seed will outperform your miracle. See, everybody can get to shouting and dancing when somebody tells you that God's going to do a miracle in your life. But the problem is the miracle can never be repeated. If you plant the seed, the seed is designed to continue to reproduce. God has gotten all of us out of trouble, health trouble, sickness trouble, uh, trouble with the law, trouble with insurance, forgot to pay the bill, didn't send it in on time. He's given us grace. And we kind of get drunk on the appetizers. So consistency. What kind of consistent prayer life do you have? And do you listen when you pray? Now, let me say something. God is not all about giving you candy canes and lollipops. God is also about stretching you and developing you. And that creates some pain in you. I, I can say it. I, I see a lot of preachers. They, they pray for everybody, lay hands on people. People fall out at the altar. But then when they get sick, they act like God done something wrong. Your body is no different than anybody else's body. Pastors are not superhuman. Preachers are not superhuman. Bishops and potentates and archbishops and apostles, nobody is above being human. You're going to have your health challenges too. You're not exempt. You may be anointed, but if you really know the anointing, the anointing burns up the cup that is in. You normally die before the members. Anybody here ever cook, really cook, back when they used to have fire and they had an old pot, it'd be all bent up and shaped out, but they still cook in it? Anybody had a buck stove? Anybody grandma had a buck stove? And they used to cook stuff on the buck stove and they had a, a whole iron skillet. That's, I, I, and that iron skillet could take all that heat. If you got an iron skillet, I ain't never seen an iron skillet warped. You got two? Hit Ricky with one of them. <laughs> but I'm just saying, see, when, see and, and the other part, and this goes to number two, continuity. 
See, you've got to be so convinced that God, now watch this, is your only option that you won't give in to fake information. Continuity, trust, and faith. And let me throw another word in here, patience. Because some people have no patience. If they don't get it when they request it, they done with God. They're going to go do it themselves. Patience is like physical therapy. You don't get fixed in one visit, am I right? You have about 20-some visits in physical therapy. You just want that foot to be right and you get on back out the door. Foot all this way. You want that arm to be right so you can just get on out the door. I ain't no need of me going to physical. And then when, that, when it's drawn up and you can't stretch it no more. Talk to me now. I got a neighbor. He had knee surgery, a knee replacement. I know he quit physical therapy because he hopping. He cannot stretch that leg out. Because he did not, I hope they let me go. I said, no, you need to tell them to hold on to you. Because you can't cut grass hopping. Look at somebody say, finish the test. Finish the test. It's hot in that oven, but finish the test. Continuity, you have to have continuity. You have to have patience in your test. And let me, let me throw this in as a, as, a, as a little flavor. Stop being negative. I ain't going to pass. I ain't going to pass. They ain't going to hire me. They, well, why did you go then? Why did you go and smile in them people's face and waste their time and think nobody's going to call you back? If you thought you were the wrong person in the wrong color, you should have never went in there. And don't ever walk into a place hanging your head down. I went back there to look in children's ministry and I made all of them had their little head up and they were waving. That's how your children should be. You know, how you look like this? <laughs> Teach your child to look a person in the face. Eye to eye. Look in their face. Speak to them. You can't get a job. Well, I hope y'all high and you know I I work anything y'all want me to work. I'm concerned about you. <laughs> Listen, God is invested in you and your future. If you're writing, you need to write. When you pray this month, I gave you all some scriptures before. God's invested. The problem is you ain't invested in you. You know why? You're trying to prove something to somebody rather than live. As the old folks say, I want to live so God can use. Don't nobody know that song but me. I don't even know why you clapping. I want to live so God can use me anywhere. Look at look, the deacons over there. Now they know that song. You see how they try to do me now? Anywhere I want to live so. God can use it. You can't live like a squirrel and live like a rodent and expect to be in charge of the palace. Hmm? Yeah. Number three, faithfulness to the process. If you have rehabilitation, start Stay and finish. If you're praying, start, stay, and finish until you get an answer from God of which way to go. Now, let me help you out when you're looking for an answer. God's not always going to speak to you. But he will use people and use things to speak to you. The problem is you've not heard his voice enough to know when he speaks. It could be a baseball game. 
And one thing that somebody say will be your revelation. God will use the elements and the things in the earth to speak to you. The problem is your spiritual antenna is not turned on. You don't hear God spiritually. You want to see victory rather than believe victory. Your spiritual antenna has to be turned on. I'm going to say this. I think I've got about maybe six minutes. I said this to um, the early service. You've done enough for ungrateful people. I'm going to ask you a question. Zoom in on me. I want them to see my new little shirt, and I've lost some weight. I want people, yeah, zoom on in. If you're scared, close your eyes. There you go. Right, that's good. Right there, right there. I don't want to scare me. <laughs> I want to ask you a question. How many times have ungrateful people gave back to you? And most of the time when they gave back to you is you made demands on them. You going to pay me my money back. As one person said this morning, I got 16 friends in my pocket that you can easily get to know. I, I want to release you in the month of June. This is the month of transition. No, leave me close. Leave me close. I'm going to close out with y'all looking at me. Ah! Okay. <laughs> you have done enough for ungrateful people. This is the month to stop carrying people who will not carry themselves. Hmm? It's time for you to focus on you, your health, and your future. Stop living by other people's opinion. Many things you would have done, you haven't done, because you don't know how people were going to respond to you. Things like going back to school, things like finding a hobby, things like taking a vacation, things like bettering myself. I can tell you who's in your corner. When something negative come out of their mouth, you better believe that's who they are. I'm going to see real quick if I can find, here it is right here. Oh, yeah, okay. Now, I'm going to give you that as I close. Now, you need to focus on your future. Ask me why. If you can't take care of yourself now, how are you going to take care of yourself when you get older? If you won't manage your health now, your health will manage you later. Today is important to your future. One of the things you have to do is get over how you feel about yourself. Yourself is not important. You and your future is. Grandma, granddaddy, big mama, papa, your mommy, dad. And here's the thing I tell people all the time. Well, my parents going to leave me something. That don't make a difference. Ask me why. If you don't have nothing now, you won't know how to have nothing later. Because to leave something, somebody has to sacrifice. When you give to people who will not sacrifice, you will always lose. Stop catering to ungrateful people. Now, a lot of people get upset with that, but that's okay. The truth never changes. When people are blessed, the reason they are blessed is because they're pouring something into you. See, some of you have no room for a new blessing because you're hoarders of everything. If you want to grow, 
you got to learn how to give. I spoke with someone earlier today before I even went in to service, and they were asking me, and they was like, well, you know so much. I said, no, here's the, give. Here's the secret. The more I give, the more room I have to receive. Are oh, you hearing what I'm saying? The more I give, the more room I have to receive. The problem that most people have with me is I don't sow into bad soil anymore. Ungrateful people, family members and all. Because when it's time to build you, you've given away all your lumber. Oh, come on, talk to me. We may as well go ahead to 11.30. Let's go ahead. What, what, it, what, it, what y'all smoking? All right, give me back. The, the devil just, just, I think somebody had a gummy or something. They just, okay, it's okay. I, I, I'm back. You know, I was gone for a minute. I've been gone about a month help, helping family. But you can no longer carry people who won't stand up for themselves. When it's time for you, you're not going to have anything. And most of what you have is going to be old and outdated. You don't need to go to the hospital with underwear you didn't have for three years. But now some of y'all get it. Am I making sense? Now, this is going to be a little tighter. I see somebody might need to pass me a fan. It's getting hot in here. Stop looking and allowing people to feed into misery. Stop allowing people to draw you into their misery. Most misery that's happening to people is self-inflicted. They just want somebody to help them carry a burden that they created. When someone comes to you, ask them what's their plan. That would not be a long conversation. Does this make sense? Ask me why. Everybody say this word, denial. Denial Denial suffocates our involvement in our own future. You want me to make that plain? Take care of your health before you worry about somebody else's health. Take care of your mental health before you worry about some. Quit saying people crazy. We all crazy. Everybody need a therapist. And anybody say they don't, they lying. Yeah, I know. I know exactly where I come from. I come from where the Holy Ghost fix everything. The Holy Ghost is to fix your spirit. Medicine is for your body and therapy is for your mind. Because sometimes you, sometime you need a Bible and sometimes you need a spiritual prescription. Suffocating in denial. Oh, I'm going to paint my house. When? Oh, I'm going to plant some grass this year. Never. Oh, I'm going to start saving money. No, something always come up. Hmm? Here is what I want you to know, and this is probably for one or two people in this room. When you begin to come into your own, here's what you're not prepared for. To be blackballed. Thank you, you got it. When you start to come into your own, and you start to get your own independence, and you were a part of the branch, and now you're breaking off, you got a few rules, people will blackball you for your thoughts, for your ideas, for your dreams, and for your individuality. And some of y'all have stuck with the pack, and you ain't never going to grow. Because you do everything they want you to do. But they don't do none of what you say. Come on, talk to me. Am I telling the truth? And, And you know what your problem is? You're trying to please them.
You're trying to please them. You're trying to keep the peace. D, what did I say what happened to Jesus when he kept the peace? They still hung him. And if you don't plan to be home, hung, you might better stand up and get away. <laughs> Am I making sense? Be you. Stand up for you. Never let anybody tell you what you're not. Never. That hit somewhere. Because, see, some of y'all look at your ethnicity. And you already say they prejudging you. That's when you're not spiritual. I can't help their prejudging. But if God gave you that assignment, you hadn't talked to God. Because God will outweigh anybody. You don't believe it? It's in the Bible. Remember Pilate? Who they wanted to crucify Jesus and he cried out and said, I what? I find. See, you using your color when you should be using your influence in God. I wish I could help you. God can give you such revelation, they have to have you at the table. Somebody asked me how to do it. I said, it ain't me. Because I always seek him for revelation. And when I open my mouth, you have to have me at the table. Y'all don't live like that, do you? Y'all go in being, go in trying to be humble. I, well, if y'all don't pay for $6 an hour, well, I'll take it. <laughs> y'all make me feel like I'm by myself. If they expect something out of you, why don't you demand something out of them? Hmm? They put all the pressure on you. Don't say God gave it to you, then you struggle with what you're asking for. Here's what I'm going to close with. Say this with me. I'm not... The voices in my head. You got to know the difference between God, you, and the adversary. I am not the voices in my head. Satan will cause you to stop. People will cause you to pause. And God will tell you to press on. Y'all don't believe that, do you? Can I give you a Bible? What happened at the Red Sea? Pharaoh behind them. No place to go on the side. And a, and a, a river or ocean or whatever it was, the Red Sea, well, it said the Red Sea in front of them. What did God tell Moses? Look at somebody and say, push on, baby. Push on back. Because let me tell you something. This is from y'all young folks. I don't know the guy that said it. Things change when the rabbit got the gun. Y'all saw that, what the guy said? Yeah, you, yeah, I can't say that in church. But yeah, it's a little different when the rabbit got the gun. You need to get the gun. See, the rabbit is used to being hunted. But when the rabbit get the gun, the tables turn. It's time for you to turn the tables. You are not the voices in your head. There is a voice of the adversary. There is a voice of you, which is more likely carnal. And then there's the voice of God. You got to know the difference between God, you, and your adversary. God bless you. I'll see you soon.